Hey guys, this is Kevin at ChristianPhotoshops.com and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to create a picture like this. Now this is not my original concept. I've seen this picture done dozens of times on the internet so I do not know who the original source is. But I've seen this picture, it's kind of cool, so I wanted to try it out and uh, if anyone out there is curious how it's made, I wanted to show a tutorial on how to do that. So it's kind of a surreal image. It's got two shoes, um, two empty shoes on top of a puddle and then below the shoes is the entire reflection of the person um, in the puddle. So kind of a surreal image. It's actually a very simple image to make and a lot of it is actually done with the photography side and so I want to show you how to do it right on the photography side and then um, when you bring it into Photoshop it's actually very simple so photography and Photoshop are both going to be required on this one so um, let me go ahead and show you how we created this image um, so we have two images um, two base images that we started off with the first one is me standing in a puddle and my wife actually took this picture so I'm standing in the puddle and then she took the picture and she wanted to make sure that um, obviously you can see where my shoes are and the reflection and we wanted to make sure that the entire reflection was in the frame so head to toe um, the entire reflection was in the frame and then we have to shoot another picture which is the shoes in the puddle with no reflection. So I, I jumped out of the way, put two shoes here, and then she took the exact same picture, um, but this time there's no reflection. And so these two images are gonna be blended together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take these two pictures and I'm gonna put them in the same file right on top of each other, just like that. Okay, so let me go in and talk about the photography part here. Um, and this is definitely the most important part of this project. If you don't have the photography right, it's not going to work in Photoshop. So to do this picture, ideally you would want to shoot both frames at the exact same everything. The exact same height, the exact same angle, the exact same focal point, the exact same um, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, everything needs to be exactly the same. The only thing different should be one picture has a full person in it and the other one just has shoes in it. Now we made a rookie mistake and didn't have a tripod with us but we still want to do the picture. Um, so my wife got in the right spot and took the picture of me standing there and then she held her spot as best she could um, while well, I jumped out of the frame, grabbed the two shoes, put the shoes down, and then she took the same picture again. Now obviously it's not perfect. Um, the height is a little bit different um, because you just can't hold the camera in the exact same spot. So ideally you would want to have a tripod. Um, we didn't have a tripod but we still want to do the picture so I just got my wife to hold as still as she could and then take the two separate pictures. Um, obviously you need to have the focal point at the exact same spot. So the shoes, um, I made sure when I jumped out of the puddle I had two imprints in the water, um, in the mud below. So I made sure I put the shoes in the exact same spot that they were and then focus on those um, for both shots. Um, that way everything is in the right focus. So let me show you the specs if you're interested of how I shot this picture. Um, so I was using a see I was using a Canon 5D Mark II and the lens I had was the 17 to 40 L lens and I had it all the way at 40 um, millimeters for this one and then the specs were um, the aperture was f 4.5 because I wanted um, I didn't want it to be really blurry um, in the background or the foreground but I do want a little bit of blur so 4.5 um, on the shoes, so they're nice and sharp. And then the foreground's a little blurry and the background's just a little bit blurry. Um, the shutter speed was 1 over 100. And um, the rule of thumb, if you're shooting with a 40 uh, millimeter, um, to make sure you don't have any camera shake, um, you want to double that, which would be 1 80th of a second. That's just a rule of thumb to, to make sure that 
um, the camera steady. So we did one over a hundred. And um, once we had those two settings, we um, put our ISOs at 400. Um, and those were the specs. So obviously we're shooting on M, manual mode on the camera. And then we set it to these. And then we made sure that we shot both pictures at the exact same settings. So rule of thumb, everything needs to be the same for both pictures. The only thing different is your, your subject. So now that we have both pictures here, um, let's go ahead and um, do the Photoshop part. So I'm going to make this one about 50% um, on the opacity just so I can see both of them. And you can see very quickly um, what happens when you don't have a tripod. Um, they're, not, they're not perfectly lined up. So either um, she was aiming too far down or she went forward or backwards or whatever. Um, if you'd have a tripod, that wouldn't happen, but that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to make this picture a little bit smaller. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to put the shoes. So I'm dealing with the shoes layer. I'm going to put the shoes right over the other shoes as best as I can. And about right there looks good. Okay, so now we have two layers that are, for the most part, matched up, just like that. And we can always adjust it if we need to in the future. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and crop this image because all of this stuff on the outside is not necessary anymore. So I'm going to crop it just like that. And I don't like this... Um, the playground stuff in the back, um, we shot this at a park. I really don't like the, the playground and um, all of that distracting stuff right there. So I'm going to bring it all the way down for my crop, all the way to where you don't see that grass and playground. So I'm going to bring it right there. Okay. So all I've done is lined up the two layers as best as I could. And then um, I cropped all the distracting stuff out. So now what we want to do is we need to mask out the, the reflection. So I'm going to create a layer mask, and then I'm going to get a brush, soft, I will do about a 50% um, hardness brush, and then I'm going to paint black on this layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to erase parts of the layer. And I don't want to erase the shoes or anything, I just want to erase the bottom part. So what I'm going to do is just start erasing this right here. And I'm going to erase the entire bottom part of the picture. Okay, let me lower my opacity or my flow a little bit and I'm going to start erasing parts up here where the two images are blending together like that. Okay, and actually I'm gonna I'm gonna bring these these little ripples out right here. I'm gonna bring those out just a little bit. Okay, so there is the rough, the very rough outline right there, and we're gonna clean it up in just a little bit. Okay, so to clean it up what we want to do is zoom in right here, and then what we're gonna do is um, on that same mask, I'm going to I'm gonna get my flow down to about 10 to 20, something like that. And then I'm going to make sure that reflection goes all the way to the shoe. Because if it doesn't, it's going to look kind of weird. So I'm painting that reflection of the body, and I'm making sure it goes all the way up to the shoe. So same thing on this side. Just bring it all the way up. There we go. Bring it right here under the shoe. And let me fix that right there. Okay, so really all I'm doing is I'm just painting out the parts of this layer I don't want. Um, which is the empty water. So we want to have the reflection in the water. 
and so you're just erasing part of this layer. So that looks pretty good right there. I mean, all I did was just paint out um, the spots I don't want. It really helps when the two shoes are the same distance apart. That really helps when you want to um, to merge these two layers together. I think that looks good right there. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much all you have to do is just one layer mask. Obviously, everything's got to be lined up. And um, you can tell the difference here. I want to clean up just a little bit more. You can see that I missed some spots down here. Let me clean that up. And another thing you can tell if you examine the picture very closely is that you can see, um, notice right here to the left of my shoes, um, you can see that the water's a little bit brighter here and then a little bit darker here. And that's because the sun was setting and so even though we were shooting at two different, I mean, at the same, um, um, every, all the settings were the same, the light in the background, the sun was setting, so the sun was actually changing the light, and the settings were the same, but the light was changing, so um, it's not a big deal, it's a little bit brighter than it is here, um, but what you could do is just kind of feather it in. Kind of like that. Um, and that way it's just a little bit more seamless. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to do some final touches to this picture. I'm going to create a new layer on top of these and I'm going to merge all of these together. And the way you do that um, is Control alt shift and then the letter E. Okay, so now I made a, a, a stamp um, layer. So everything that below this was merged onto one layer. And then I'm going to change this to multiply. Okay, so now we have a lot darker picture right here. And I really want to do that because I think the shadow is kind of hard to see here, or the reflection's hard to see, so I wanted to darken that up. But I don't necessarily want to darken up this top part of the picture. So I'm going to create a gradient um, for the mask. And so all I'm doing is black to transparent, and then just draw a nice little gradient right there. That looks good. And then I'm also going to, um, the shoes look just a little too dark for my taste. So what I'm going to do is on that same mask, I'm just going to kind of paint out a little bit. Right here to make sure that that multiply doesn't hit those shoes. Okay, so there's your before and after. Um, just making it a little bit darker. Um, you don't have to, but I just think that a little bit darker shadow is nice like that. Okay, now um, you could stop right there. This picture looks good like that. One thing I would, wanted to add was add a, kind of a reflection to the water. The sun was setting in the background, and you can kind of see that. Um, but I want to kind of amplify the water here and make it look like um, the sun... Um, the sunset is actually reflecting in the water. So what I did was I took a picture of a sunset that I took uh, probably two years ago. And um, I'm going to take this sunset picture and we're going to bring it right in here. And um, since it's a reflection, we're going to flip it. So I'm going to flip it upside down. Just like that. Actually, probably just like that. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I'm going to put that sunset where I want it to go, which is probably about right in there. And then um, we need to clean up, obviously, the, the top part of that sunset. So I'm just going to use my gradient tool again for the mask and just draw black right there. And then with the white, I'm going to, with a low flow, I'm going to bring it in where the water is. Not where the asphalt is, but where the um, where the water is. So I'm just painting in white on the sunset. That looks pretty good. Alright, and 
and I'll touch the shoes just a little bit because they would reflect a little bit because you know they're they're kind of um, a shiny surface so they would reflect a little bit but I want to mostly just paint it on the water and not on the dry part okay that looks pretty good so here's the difference um, between um, no clouds and clouds um, so it just it shows the reflection of the sunset which there was a sunset there but it didn't look quite quite look like that um, but that's you know up to your personal taste and then finally what I would do is add a curved layer on top of it and um, I'm going to bring down the curve maybe bring up some highlights and it's way too dark down here so I'm just going to bring um, a little mask right there maybe lower the opacity all right, stamp layer on top of everything, control alt shift E. I'm going to get rid of some of these distractions up here. Just using a healing brush, just because they're a little distracting. Okay, so there, there's the difference. I got rid of all that distraction and then duplicate that layer and then we're gonna sharpen it. So go to filter high pass and um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do about 3.5 and then change it to overlay and we are done that is how you create um, this image right here so let me recap recap what we did so what we did we had the original picture me standing in the puddle Then we put the shoes on top of it, and then we masked it out. Then we made it a little bit darker. Then we added some lights. Then we adjusted the colors. We removed the um, distractions, and then we sharpened the image. So there you go. In a very short amount of time in Photoshop, um, as long as your photography end is looking good, you can create this picture. So hope you go out, try to take this picture, look for a puddle and uh, try to shoot um, the same picture twice once with shoes once without the sh um, once with a person once without a person so blend them together in photoshop i would love to see how your creations turn out so i hope you learned something today from this photoshop i hope you enjoyed it we're going to do some more in the future so just check back soon and thanks again for watching and have a great day